Hi guys, it's Mrs. Moss here. Today we're going to begin our discussion on climate and different factors that will affect an area's climate. So let's first take a look at what those are. And I think before we do, we need to determine what is the difference between weather and climate? Well, weather is your short-term condition of, an atm of the atmosphere, and it's really daily or day-to-day -day differences with temperature, pressure, moisture, and wind. That's when you look outside and you can say, hey, it's sunny out. That's the weather, changes every day. Climate, on the other hand, are the average conditions of a region over a long-term period of time. And it has to do with temperature and precipitation levels the most. But when we talk about a long period of time, we're talking about over a year. So what factors affect climate? Well, the first is our latitude and probably most important. We just finished looking at the seasons, and so you have a good idea of how the angle of insulation that comes in and hits the different spots on our planet directly from overhead during certain times of the year. Well, that area that, has the, that receives the most direct insulation is going to be the latitude with the warmest climate, and that tends to be around the equator. And so the lower the latitude, the higher the temperature. We talked about that with season and angles of insulation, but now we need to think of it in terms of how that latitude has a specific climate or a long-term weather pattern that has to do with temperature and precipitation. So again, farther from the equator, you're going to have cooler temperatures or the higher the latitude, the lower the temperature. The next thing we're going to look at is water. Now we also looked at water in terms of the water and land's specific heat and how the temperature changes of the land um, and the water will create different pressures. Well, areas that are near bodies of water, like Long Island, they have what's called a marine climate. And what this means is that the temperatures in that area are modified. That means we have cooler summers and warmer winters. Now, let me just clarify something. It's not as if we don't have cold winters. We do. It gets very cold here in New York in the winter. However, it does not get as cold as some areas that are surrounded by land and not near a large body of water. Those temperatures get below the, in the negative level. They get below freezing during their winters, whereas we might get as low as uh, zero or even maybe a negative or a, a or maybe a little bit of a negative number like negative two but it very rarely reaches those cold frigid temperatures as it would if we were surrounded by land so the water large body of water will regulate or modify an area's temperature that leads us to the third factor that affects climate which would be land it's surrounding by land so any area that has a large landmass surrounding it is considered to be a continental climate. There's that word continental before. We heard it with air masses. Something that forms, a, an air mass that forms above land is dry and it's called a continental climate. Well, similar, something that's surrounded by land is considered a cl continental climate and that means that its summers are going to be hotter and its winters are going to be colder. Again, as I mentioned with in relation to water, these areas that are surrounded by land are going to have really freezing, frigid, cold winters. And on the contrary, their summers may get upwards of 100 degrees Fahrenheit and over. Whereas if you're by water, you may get 90 degrees, but you very rarely reach over 100 degrees. So again, land has hotter summers, colder winters. Okay, the fourth factor that affects an area's climate is going to be ocean currents. Now for this explanation, you're going to need to take out your reference table. So hit pause and turn to page four in the reference table. You'll see a map of the, unite, of the whole world and you'll see a lot of series of arrows pointing in all different directions. These are our ocean currents. Now, how do ocean currents affect the climate of an area? Well, it's a pretty basic fundamental understanding. Coastal cities that are near warm ocean currents, they will be warmer areas. They'll have higher temperatures and more rain. 
coastal cities near a cool ocean current generally have lower temperatures. The Gulf Stream, if you can locate that on your reference table, that's right along the east coast of the United States, that is a warm ocean current. And if you go to the other side of the United States, the California west coast side, it is a cool ocean current. So this actually leads the Atlantic Ocean to be a warmer ocean because it is um, the Gulf Stream ocean current that affects it. Cold water currents are off the coast of California and warm currents are around the Gulf Stream. Now these two pictures demonstrate temperature changes in the ocean and that is represented by the blue color in this picture off of California and I'm looking here down at the bottom to show me the uh, sea surface temperature. And if you look here, we have the Gulf Stream surrounded by Florida. We have the Atlantic Ocean and you can see that it is a warm ocean current that comes up and goes east, northeast. Now that's going to bring us to the end of part one for the factors that affect climate. Starting in our next video, we'll learn the rest of the factors that affect climate. We'll see you next time.